I raise uh, angelfish, the largest producer of angels in the United States. I feed extreme feed because I get better production off my breeders, a better survival rate off my babies, and overall the feed tends to be cleaner and doesn't foul my vats as much, and it's just a better feed. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Boy, I had a real treat when I was at MAC, and I had the opportunity to interview probably one of the best reefers and certainly one of the best known reefers in the entire United States, and that's Mark Levinson. He has a, a video channel. You've probably seen some of his videos. Uh, they are absolutely amazing. His aquariums are absolutely amazing, and that's Mark Levinson. Online, he goes by Melev's Reef, and I, I got the opportunity to talk to him a little bit about a project that I had seen one of his videos this is this is a still frame from the uh, from the interview that I'm going to show you here in just a moment but he has a video where he has a sea bay anemone in his 400 gallon aquarium and he wanted to get a whole colony of uh, uh, skunk clownfish in that uh, anemone and he's got such a big tank he didn't want him to take forever for the clownfish to find the anemone so he used this clear plastic tube and he literally put each clownfish in a uh, in a, like a water pitcher and poured them down the tube and they went right into the anemone and then they stayed there and we'll show you some clips from his video uh, during the interview that I'm about to show you right now but I wanted to ask him after it had been several months how things were going with that so we'll pick up that interview in progress. I really got hooked into something when you put the sea bay anemone and then the uh, skunk clownfish in yes. there. Number one, um, tell the viewers about that. And the number two, so let's see how it's going some months later. Sure. Well, what had happened was I got three fish, and a friend of mine in New York who runs a 20,000 gallon reef tank, Joe Ayolio, said, You need more clowns. And so now I had 11. But I have a 400 gallon reef, and I wanted all those clowns to get into the anemone and not just swim all over the reef and land wherever. And Joe said, You should try using a tube. And he had a video on YouTube that used a PVC pipe. And I thought, PVC is boring, you can't see what happens. I have clear acrylic. This is going to be amazing. And as you can see, it's so much easier getting them in there after the first one's in place. I don't know if they watch each other and figure it out, if they see one down low and figure it out, if they finally see an anemone and figure it out but it was no big deal getting them down there. This and so I filmed it in real time. Basically, I didn't know if it was gonna work. I hoped for the best, and I filmed it with two iPhones. And that video has got huge publicity, you know, like 50,000 views or so. And those clowns are still happy in there, and I do a head count from time to time. So there's, I put in 11, and months later, I still have 11, and they're super happy in that anemone. That's amazing because, you know, clowns can turn aggressive and so, yeah, and, and so people talk about doing these harem type tanks mm -hmm. and they say, well, it'll work for a little while, but then after that they'll start fighting and you'll wind up with two clownfish eventually. Not with harems. With a harem of skunk clowns, they stay together forever. That's their group. And they're going to be in succession of order. So you may see a little aggression. I sometimes see a big one kind of chase a little tiny one and it just goes up a little higher and comes right back down. It doesn't even care. And one cool thing I like about seeing these clownfish in the tank is around a certain time of day, they will all come up to the middle of the tank and face that way because they know the auto feeder is about to drop food and come toward them with the food. And they'll all be facing. And then Spock is doing her big loops because that's my big NASO. And she's ready to devour the bulk of it. But even as she inhales it, it goes out her gills. And more is coming down through the tumbler. And all those clownfish get a chance to eat. And then they all go back into their coral or into the anemone. You chose a sea bay anemone. Did it have to be a sea bay? Actually, it was funny because when I bought that, I bought it from a. Uh, High Def Corals, and he said, it's the weirdest bubble tip I've ever seen. And I said, okay, I'll take it. And then I put it in my tank. I was like, this is not a bubble tip. No wonder it was weird, right? I asked some other people, like, that's a sea bay. I'm like, oh, now I know. Okay. So, no, and it's been a good anemone. I did put in the anemone tank at first, but all the bubble tips were chasing it away. And it was miserable and going down and hiding in the dark. And I just thought, okay, put it in the big tank. I was trying to keep all anemones out of my reef. But this one's been a good one, and it's picked a perfect spot in the front where it doesn't sting anything important. Okay. So now, um, yeah, because a lot of times you don't want an enemy in your reef because you know, they can move around, they get caught up in your impellers, they get blasted around, they kill your corals, yada, yada. So people have had, have had trouble with that, but this is, that, that's worked out for you okay. Yeah, it stayed completely there. The way the sea bay works, it puts its foot through the sand and glues onto the glass at the bottom of the aquarium and holds tight. So you don't see the trunk of it. It's buried in four inches of sand. 
and it stayed right there. It's getting really big because when I pour in the frozen food every night, a lot of it goes right into the anemone, and the anemone is just getting bigger and bigger. Kind of in trouble on that one because it is starting to touch things, but it's not walking and damaging. And if you do have an anemone in a tank, have sponge covers on all your intakes, and that's what I do. I make sure that way if an anemone crawled onto the pump, it could not be sucked in and hurt. It would just walk on the sponge and walk off. So when people come to your channel, what do they typically see? I do educational videos, I do some product reviews, I talk about my tank, and I talk about experiences, and if I get annoyed enough about a topic, I will make a video about it. Annoyed? So do you have a current uh, uh, topic that's really uh, getting under your skin? Not right at the moment. Right now I'm in a good place. My reef is in a good place, and you know, the topics are good, but I, I watch the online community, I see what they're talking about, and like I said, if something goes too far off left field, I'm like, that's it, I'm doing a video. So once again, thanks to Mark Levinson for granting me the interview and for sharing some of his knowledge with us right here on FinCasters. Uh, you look at his aquariums and everybody wants to have an aquarium like he does. And you know that he just really uh, is a full-time devotee uh, to the hobby and just gets the amazing results that, that all of us are kind of looking for. Uh, and I really do want to try doing his little trick uh, with the sea bay anemone and with the skunk clownfish. So if that happens, I'll let you know. In fact, I actually tried putting uh, an anemone in my reef. It turned out to be a ritteri. Didn't go that well. I subsequently found out why, and I'll be sharing that information in another FinCast. But in the meantime, I will put some information uh, in the description link down below if you want to watch Mark's video on that clownfish. The, the link will be right there on the uh, clownfish and the anemones and how he did uh, the, uh, the harem, as they call it. Uh, and then don't forget right here on FinCasters, uh, I'm not marine only. I do a lot of different things. Of course, there's been a whole lot of videos from MACNA, and they're not really particular to that show, but people bring some amazing stuff to MACNA that you would never get another opportunity to show, like a gem tang or a bounce coral that uh, that cost almost $3,000. So lots of great things from MACNA. But don't think that it's limited just to, oh, if you didn't go to the show, here's what you missed. I sort of use that as an opportunity to, to find lots of different topics that are interesting all year long and, and for years to come, in fact. Uh, and also, of course, don't forget here at FinCasters, uh, we do a fair amount with planted aquariums. Uh, I have a series I call Cichlid Adventures, which are pretty cool. Uh, a lot of interviews there uh, with Rick Biro, who is uh, one of the guys who first brought cichlids to the United States. So check out Cichlid Adventures, some, some absolutely the amazing backstory on the history of how cichlids even came to America, especially African cichlids. And then, of course, uh, when I do go to some of the trade shows, I do look at aquarium products, and there are some really cool new ones out there. So there's a whole list there as well. And we've got a relatively new website that I'll be sharing with you more about in an upcoming FinCast, but check out FinCasters.com as well. That's all for this FinCast. I'll see you in the next one.